What happened to David's wives before they returned to Ziklag? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 1 Samuel on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 10, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Samuel 30, verse 1, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Samuel chapter 30, beginning at verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burnt with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring me the ephod. Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men who, who were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where they had stayed, where, where, those who, who, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and four hundred men, for two hundred stayed behind, so that, who were weary that could not cross the brook Basor. David has been going with the Philistines up to the Jezreel Valley to fight Israel. Now from the context, it appears that David was feigning his loyalties to the Philistines in order to remain out of the clutches of Saul. Achish had been fooled by this, but the other lords of the Philistines were not willing to take that risk. And so David and his men were sent home, which at this time was in Ziklag. Coming out of the events of chapter 30, in 2 Samuel 1, we'll make clear that these events occur concurrently with the events of 1 Samuel 31 and the battle up at Jezreel, so let's keep that in mind. Unbeknownst to David, when he and his men went up with the Philistine army to battle, the Amalekites came in and burned Ziklag, taking hostage the women and children, killing none. This would be in retaliation for David's actions against them in chapter 27. By taking the women and children hostage, the Amalekites weren't being more merciful than David was to them. It's just that women and children made valuable slaves, and so this is likely the reason they did this. When David and his men returned on the third day, they found the city burned and their families missing. To say that there was great grief would be an understatement. Nobody was left behind, including David's two wives, Abigail and Hinoam. So much in grief were these people that there was talk, talk amongst them of stoning David. Now, why would they have wanted to do that? Well, perhaps they felt that by going up with the Philistines, something they didn't have to do, especially if it was just a ruse, David left their families defenseless and more vulnerable to attack. And so David, sensing the unrest from the men that, had, that he had led for likely more than three years by this point, called for Abiathar the priest and the ephod. Using Abiathar, David sought an answer from the Lord as to whether or not he should go after, go after the Amalekites. It is here again that we see the faith of David shine through. Having been sent back by the Philistines, it is quite possible that David saw the providence of the Lord protecting him from battle, and so to engage in another battle might not be what the Lord wants. Perhaps their family members would be returned some other way. And that's really one of the differences between David and Saul. Saul was rash, getting his army to swear not to eat until sunset during their battle with the Philistines back in 1 Samuel 14. David, though, was not, he was not perfect, often was measured in his actions, usually taking time to seek out the Lord's advice or to examine the situation 
with what the will of the Lord had, had in mind. In this case, it was the Lord's will for David to pursue the Amalekites and overtake them. What we're going to find here is that David is going to deliver a great blow to the Amalekites, a people that the Lord had intended for Saul to utterly destroy. For we're rarely going to hear of the Amalekites by name harassing Israel again after this point. So, with the Lord at work, not only, not only was he protecting David from battle with the Philistines, but he was fulfilling his promise to Moses and Israel that the Amalekites would be dealt with for their treasury at Rephidim those centuries earlier. And to do that, the Lord used this hostage-taking by the Amalekites, but the women and children were not killed even through it all. With the Lord's permission, David and his 600 men set out, coming first to the brook Bezor. If one takes the route due south from Ziklag, the brook Bezor would be about 20 kilometers or 12 miles away. They were advancing so fast that about 200 of them had to remain at Bezor, while the remaining 400 continued. We'll continue with this story, Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 11 to 20, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.